What's a bit about penguins? Today we're going to do 2016 number two, rate, population growth, and regulation of gene expression. Bacteria can be cultured in media with carefully controlled nutrient composition. The graph below shows the growth of bacterial population in a medium with limiting amounts of two nutrients, one and two. And then they give us this figure showing us our bacterial population density on the right, giving us these measurements, and then the relative concentration of our nutrients on this uh, axis. This is what we call a double Y. So you have um, measurements on both sides. Um, so the nutrients are specifically looking at this axis, and then the amount of the population is on this axis. Okay, so part A says to estimate the maximum population density in cells per milliliter for the culture. So if we look here, we can see, okay, well, where's the maximum at? Well, right here. And so if we draw a line over, we can see that at 10 to the 8 cells per milliliter is going to be where we have the maximum. So 10 to the 8th is our answer. Um, and I, of course, would write that as a complete sentence. Using the data, describe what prevents further growth of bacterial population in the culture. So if we look here, we say, okay, well, this is the highest. But if you drop your, uh, my mouse down, but if you drop your finger down, you'll see that there's no more of nutrient one and there's no more nutrient two, which means that we've depleted all the nutrients. Well, if they have no nutrients, they have no food, of course, the bacteria population is going to die. Um, and so when both nutrients are depleted. So the student said the maximum bacterial population density is 10 to the 8th cells per milliliter in this culture. Further growth beyond this point is prevented by limited resources. Both nutrient one and two are uh, entirely depleted. So part B, using the data, calculate the growth rate in cells per milliliter per hour of the po bacterial population between hours two and four. Okay, so first thing we have to do is look at our graph. So at two, we see that I have 10 to the first cells per milliliter. And at four, I've got 10 to the fourth uh, cells per milliliter. And so when we're looking for rate, we're just looking for the change in Y over the change in X. So Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, okay? So 10 to the fourth minus 10 to the first divided by four minus two. So that's just 10,000 minus 10 um, divided by four minus two. Don't fall into the same trap that my students did and think, oh, well, 10 to the fourth minus 10 to the first is 10 to the third, because that's not right. Um, and so that gives us 9,990 divided by 2, giving us 4,995, which is our answer that we're looking for. So a student said the growth rate between hours 2 and 4 is 4,995 cells per milliliter uh, hour. Part C, identify the preferred nutrient source of bacteria in the culture over the course of the experiment. So if we look at the experiment, we see that at the beginning, we have both nutrient 1 and nutrient 2. Nutrient 2 kind of stays stagnant, like it's not being used, versus nutrient 1 immediately goes down. That tells us that nutrient 1 is going to be the preferred nutrient. Because the bacteria prefers to use nutrient 1, it's going to consume nutrient 1 first, which means that its concentration decreases, while nutrient 2 that was not being used stays kind of level in its concentration until it starts being used. And so our justification for this is that um, when both are found in the uh, media, then we're going to see that nutrient one is used first. Um, and then we see that nutrient two doesn't get used until after all of nutrient one has been depleted. And that's what the scoring guideline has. So when both nutrients are present in growth media, only nutrient one is used. Nutrient two is only used after nutrient one is depleted. Then we have to propose one advantage of the nutrient preference for an individual bacterium. Why would it choose to do nutrient one over nutrient two? So there's a lot of different answers you can come up here. And the ones that are valid um, are that they don't spend energy making the enzymes, the protein the cell doesn't need. They do not have to express excess me uh, metabol metabolic genes at once. Uh, the preferred nutrient provides more energy, so maybe there's more energy in that nutrient, and so breaking that one down makes it preferred. Um, maybe they already have the enzymes of the proteins that are needed to break it down already present in the cell, um, and so that would be why it would be preferred. So students said bacteria preferred nutrient one as evidenced by the fact that they consume nutrient one first, as shown by nutrient one's depletion prior to nutrient two's depletion. The amount of nutrient two only begin, begins to decline be consumed once nutrient one is already gone. Nutrient one probably is a more efficient source of energy, or in other words, requires the bacteria to expend less energy relative to the energy gained from the nutrient. This preference would be an ad, uh, advantage to an individual bacteria because it would then expend more energy on reproduction. So part D, we have to describe how nutrient one most likely regulates the genes for metabolism of nutrient one and the genes for metabolism of nutrient two. OK, so we know that nutrient one is being used first and nutrient two does not even get touched. OK, so that means that nutrient one must be activating the genes. It must be um, 
inducing transcription and translation so that we can make the, the proteins to break down uh, the nutrient one. And then at the same time, it's going to somehow inhibit the genes. It's going to um, inhibit transcription, inhibit translation so that we're not able to make nutrient two. Um, and so those are the two things that it promotes expression of genes required from metabolism of nutrient one, and then it represses expression of genes required from metabolism of nutrient two. Um, and then now it says provide two reasons the population does not grow between hours five and six. So here we can see that between five and six, the amount of the individuals are equal. OK. Um, and so why are there is there no food being consumed? Well, it's ran out of nutrient one. Right. And it's staying level and we haven't started breaking down nutrient two. So maybe we need to make the enzymes required to break down nutrient two. And so the population isn't able to grow because it's not it doesn't have any food because um, nutrient one is depleted. And it also doesn't have the way to break down nutrient two. So nutrient one is depleted um, or neither nutrient is being consumed or it takes time to produce the enzymes required. So a student says when nutrient one is present in the environment, it turns on the genes that allow the bacteria to digest nutrient one. It probably does this by acting a phosphorylation cascade that produces a molecule that binds to a promoter and allows RNA polymerase to bind. This allows the genes to be transcribed, leading to the uptake and consumption of nutrient one. At the same time, nutrient one probably also prevents the genes for digesting nutrient two from being transcribed, gaining the bacteria a preference for nutrient one. It probably does this through a phosphorylation cascade that produces an inhibitor that prevents RNA polymerase from binding to the genes for nutrient two. Only when nutrient one is absent will nutrient two be absorbed. They then go on to say the population does not grow between hours five and six because it's not consuming nutrients. It could not be consuming nutrient two because it takes time for the inhibitor caused by nutrient one to be released to so that the genes for consuming nutrient two can be transcribed. Alternatively, the inhibitor could be released quickly, but the proteins for uptake of nutrient two could take a long time to produce, and thus the population does not consume nutrients for that time. Perhaps the bacteria have a mechanism for waiting after the bleach of nutrient one to see if more nutrients will become available before turning to nutrient two. So if that was helpful, remember a bad pain was just as bio.